Hey guys and welcome back for a new video. Today I wanted to show you a cool project called uh, Fold4Covid.io which is a project to help you use Raspberry Pi 3 and Raspberry Pi 4 devices to fold for COVID-19 and help with the research uh, for a cure. Uh, so this project is using uh, Balena.io, which is a basically a fleet management software for your Raspberry Pi. I use it for all my projects, actually. I don't use Raspbian. I use just the Balena OS and I push my code through it. So Balena recently, which I follow, actually recently uh, posted a blog post to explain how, how this works and their participation to the project uh, to help anyone uh, basically use their Pi and quickly get up and running. So this is what I'm going to show you in this video. It's a quick tutorial and you will see it takes less than five minutes to get running. So all you need uh, first is to pick a device. Uh, so you can see there's a lot of different devices. You can run it on a laptop, on your computer. Uh, but what we are interested in is to run it on the Raspberry Pi. Um, so as you can see also, there's a quite a huge list of devices. We'll be using the Pi 4, but actually there's a bunch of other devices that are supported by a Balena.io on which you can deploy code. Um, and that code basically will run on any of those devices. You don't have to take care of anything else. Um, and now when I say code, the cool thing with this tutorial, there's no code involved. So you pick the platform, um, then all you need to do is to decide if you're going to use your Raspberry Pi with Wi-Fi or LAN. Uh, I'd recommend to put in a Wi-Fi uh, if you're not sure, uh, but from my experience uh, using uh, Ethernet uh, was better. It avoided some overheating with the Wi-Fi and losing connection to the Pi. So once you set that up, you can download the image. And while this is downloading, you need to also download another thing called Balena Etcher. So the Balena Etcher is a software to help you flash your SD card. Uh, so this is going to be the, the software that allows you to take the image file you're downloading at the moment and burn it onto the SD card. So just like you would be basically making a bootable uh, Raspbian SD card for your Raspberry Pi or a bootable USB, uh, Etcher basically just puts the image onto the SD card and it's fairly simple to use as well. So once the download is uh, done, you will have your uh, Balina image. Um, so here it's on my desktop, it's a zip file. And what you need to know is that you don't need to actually uh, unzip it. Uh, next step is to take your Raspberry Pi. So I made a video recently about uh, the Labist's uh, Raspberry Pi 4 kit. Uh, it's on my channel, so you can check it out. Uh, I'm going to use this one because that's what I have lying around. Um, so you take out the SD card, make sure you, there's nothing important on there, otherwise back it up. It's going to be completely erased. Um, take an SD card adapter and put the micro SD in there. And then obviously because I'm, I'm using a Mac, I'm going to have to use a magical dongle. Um, putting it the actual proper way in there, which connects to my USB Type-C. Now, if you have a PC or a laptop that has an SD card reader or an older MacBook, uh, just put the SD card straight into your PC. So once the SD card appears and you can see me, it's called Resin Boot because I already had like some Balina things on there. Anyway, um, so open Etcher and you select the Balina image that you just downloaded. All right, and then make sure that uh, in the middle we have the right uh, SD card selected. It automatically selects it. Uh, and on, on Mac, it will ask you for your administrator password. So you click burn and it will start flashing the card. I'm gonna speed that up. Obviously I have a large SD card, so it's taking a bit of time, but if you have a very fast reader, then it should take less time. Anyway, once it's done, uh, it automatically ejects the card, so you don't have to worry about that. You can just close Etcher, and then you can disconnect basically the SD card. If you wanted to flash more, then just insert more cards and flash another, etc., etc. Uh, this can be useful if you have three or four or five Raspberry Pis lying around, actually. Right. So the next step now that you have a flashed SD card is to basically insert the SD card into your Raspberry Pi and connect it to power. So I'm taking out my card um, and stick it in the back of the Raspberry Pi. So obviously, depending on your case, it might be at a different location. And 
that's it. So next step will be to connect power to the Raspberry Pi, LAN cable if you need it, otherwise you can run on Wi-Fi if you configured it. And that's basically it. There's nothing else to do. It will boot up and you can connect to it. So the next step now is to basically um, head to the interface, uh, which is a web interface on which you can monitor what's happening on your Raspberry Pi. So officially you have to go to the fold for covid.local URL, uh, but for me, uh, I couldn't load it for some reason and I tried different browsers and it was the same. So what I ended up doing as a solution, uh, because I don't have any screen on my Raspberry Pi, um, so I went to my router admin interface and I found uh, the Raspberry Pi which had connected to it, uh, for, which for me is 192.168.9.209, uh, 203, sorry. Um, and this is the address that I typed in my browser to access the interface. And so once the Raspberry Pi is booted, uh, you will end up directly on the page, um, which is loading basically the interface of, uh, of what's running on the Raspberry Pi. And this is like uh, the Boink uh, command line appearance basically. Uh, and it's showing basically that right now I'm still downloading some processes, but I already have three um, Rosetta at home projects that are actually folding. One more thing I need to tell you, uh, from my observation, it gets really hot. Uh, the cooler that comes with this Raspberry Pi kit is not really big. Um, and so it reaches easily 80 degrees uh, Celsius, uh, if not more. I actually almost burned my finger with it. So I'd recommend you have a good cooler on there or put your Raspberry Pi in a cool place or add some airflow on it with some fans. Um, there's a bunch of videos out there for doing that with the Raspberry Pi. It's fairly simple. The only thing I would have to add is that it's not always clear what exactly it's folding. Some projects are called COVID something, so it's easy to know. Uh, some others are not, so so yeah. On the website for uh, fold4covid.io, you have some more information about how it works. Um, and right now, by default, your Raspberry Pi will boot up and start folding for their team or their username. Uh, now, if you wanted to change that username, it's possible, but you will have to create your own uh, balena.io account. It's free. You can have up to 10 devices in there for free, actually. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, but it will require you to use a, a bit of command line on your computer uh, to basically push an image. You have to download the source code from their GitHub. Uh, and once you've done that and you have your own device booted, then you can change an uh, environmental variable in the berlina.io dashboard interface um, to change it to your own username. Yeah, and, and so that variable is the one that is uh, highlighted here in the GitHub documentation called account key. Uh, account key which you can get uh, from the, from the Res Rosetta at Home uh, website. So you can see here now I have all my four um, folding threads running, uh, which is pretty cool. So that's it for this video. Thanks guys for checking it out. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, if I should make a tutorial using the balina.io so you can see how to set it up with your own account key. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and I see you in the next video.